Hello, Last everybody. One. Doesn't matter. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to game two of a match between Raven Shock and Taka. Taka did win that last game pretty one sidedly. And. One, one sidedly? Okay. Yeah, very one sidedly in that game. And. Uh, it's all the, it's all the Bane Lanes. It's chosen, all the Bane Lanes. Has chosen Zelnaga Caverns as his map. A very interesting choice. This map is very. Yeah, Taka, can you please load? Thank you. This map mm -hmm. is very large, and it's harder for this Zerg to take his, its natural expansion, and it's much easier for a Hellion to squeeze through this back entrance right here in order to mm -hmm. um, burn up some drones, and therefore, I'm, I'm actually thinking that this was a very good choice here by Matthew Drew. Plus, it's much easier to one base as Terran than it is a Zerg. So, either way, I'm, I'm really liking this choice here. And so, what we have... Uh, you know, we have the Terran player on the bottom left, Matthew Joe, and in the top right we have John Dung, the blue zerg. And so now these two players are going to be going at it for game two of this tournament. And so we see the standard 10 supply from the Terran player, Overlord, yada yada, boring stuff, pre-game stuff. Yes. And John's going to be doing extractor trick again, just like before. If, I feel like normal. he's just cutting corners a little bit uh, too much here, thinking that he's got everything right down and crisp here for Taka. And these little things that cost him a little bit of minerals might just cost him more or bigger when we get to the later rounds of the tournament when he's facing people that are um, better. Much better. <laughs> Not to say that Matthew Joe isn't good. He, he's definitely silver level, and I would love to see him play Henry <laughs> one day and to see who will win. But we will do that yep. later. As Henry, I heard, actually beat Sam Kassler the other day. Uh-ha, that's very true. That is very true. And now we see, um, you know, Refiner going up at 13, standard build from Terran. And the Zerg is going to take his natural expansion before his spawning pool, going for that economy build, which, which will be great into the mid and late games. Plus, that Zerg should always be one base ahead of their opponent. But... That's that also like a the little side bit point. blurred in SC2 compared to SC1. Yeah, that, yeah, it is. But like, I don't know. I like the old classic stuff, retro and, stuff. And oh, and Taka is going to get denied scouting here, and he could have just gone in, but oh, oh, good block here Ooh, by Raven, good block. Raven Shock. Now Taka is not going to be able to see the gas timing here of his opponent. If we see his view, ah, no gas timing. Meanwhile, uh -huh. <laughs> meanwhile, <an> overall <laughs> getting being gotten here by Raven Shock. Um, Taka is a little bit in the dark here, but as this Overlord comes to be sacrificed and we'll see that the, the barracks is indeed still there and has not been somehow cancelled, we will see this Marine I, take I out. I do think the, the Marine will be able to pick off the Overlord. Exactly, and he will, he be, will able be able to, to see a 1-1. One, one. Okay, this could be like a small like 1-1-ish one, one kind of thing going on. <laughs> and if Matthew Drew knew the build order with the Thor, I think that it would be very deadly here for the Thor our turn um, to beat the Zerg. And we do see two Marines and coming so, out right now. It looks like um, he might be gearing up to do a bunker rush here. No, no, no. Really he's just sure trying to pick no, up he's the drone. Move back. Never mind. John, James, just, just no. Just, just, it could no. happen, you know. It, <laughs> it, it could, could happen, but... Um, Meanwhile, we see um, John not going to be getting much right now. Just going to get up his queens and start droning as hell. And yeah. um, we do see the SCV inside Taka's base here. Uh, has Taka wait, even made a single Zerg game? Wait, he with three... No, wait. Well, no, he hasn't. But that's, that's not good, because well, Marines are coming up right here. Well, anyways, the Terran... Yeah, He's, they're going to ignore the drone in the center of the map, scouting this information. One Spinecrawler is going to come up. No Zerglings. Still no Zerglings. Two Zerglings finally get built two here. Two Zerglings. I don't know. Yeah. Can, two Zerglings can probably handle these three uh, things. Hey, oh, Matthew Joe is very indecisive about what he's going to do. Right now, two queens no, are going to maybe peek out this uh, SCV. No, not not going to happen. And the push is no, and the push is deferred now. Yes, it's a too late. minute bunker rush is usually not very effective against Zerg. On the other hand, but we do see from the Terran that he's doing two factory. So a two factory build, it's going to be a transition into mech play. So probably Marines, Sea Shanks, Thors, which I really like to see. And plus, it's like the only thing that's actually useful against Zerg. Yes, but Marines like the only counter every <laughs> unit in the game, so therefore we have to... Except Banelings. Except, except Banelings. You just, you just actually, you, 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 you just split them, and suddenly they counter Banelings too. It's kind of stupid. But, I mean, no one can do that perfectly except for a robot, so therefore we're gonna see here. Ignore Taka it. here actually keeping his cool, still building drones, gonna get supply block just because of it. 
<laughs> but either way, exactly. he's just building more and more drones. Even though he saw that really scary pressure of three Marines um, come in for our um, Terran player. Meanwhile, I don't know if our Terran player can support two racks, two, two factory, one star port on one base. I mean, yeah, it's, a it's Protoss be kind of tough can't there. support two, two gauge, two robo. A Protoss can't even support two robo. <laughs> but with these mules, but, um, maybe the Terran can but, support this if he only decides to build but, Hellions? But we do see that Terran's getting a shit ton of Hellions, right? Oh, wait, I shouldn't swear, should I? It's Whatever. Like, oh, he's getting a ton of Hellions, it's right? Flame as well. and Although it's, it's just as deadly as before, even with even with the nerf. So we're going to see if these Hellions yeah. can do some decent damage. I feel like um, Taka these is going really to really have to... do so much damage. If, because Taka has no defenses right now. All his queens, which those Hellions can just run by. His no Zerglings, no Spine Crawlers. This would be a great opportunity for Michael Joe to do enormous damage to Taka's economy. We do see right, that uh, he knows about it coming up. He does not know about the Infernal Bringing Nighter. The thing, one top, the one thing Taka just did, forgot to do here is get up um, any scouting after those initial Marine things. Oh, and we're going to see these Hellions come in. He's lining them up. And Blue Flame is just oh finished my God, A very just beautiful um, timing push here by um, Matthew Joe. And these Hellions Michael probably would do so much damage. He just he needs to get properly, into... So therefore he's going to lose yeah. another Hellion. Two Hellions so far at the cost They're, they're of... lined up. Those, those drones were lined up. But they're going to get stuck in between the middle line. And looks like they're all going to be taken out. No! Ah, uh, that was such they a good play there by Matthew Joe. However, he just... He... he has lost almost equal resources with his opponent, even though Taga has lost 17 drones, or 17 units actually, we don't know if they're drones, from that last push. Yeah, he, they had the potential to do so much damage, but he just didn't micro them properly. Instead of just going for the Zerglings, they could have just ignored it, go, went straight for the drones, because, you know, John Dang just has a ton of them and not a lot of units. But anyways... He's going to scan here to make sure that the hatchery is still here. <laughs> he's going to see that it is, and therefore he's going to respond by pushing out. And That's a smart as decision. we see this, Not we need no, to, um, he... John. John is going to be trying to take his third at the goal a little bit, a little bit greedy here. Too soon. Yeah, a little bit too and greedy. And an infestation hit, but, hit here. Um, it looks like he's not going to be going for the standard spire. I mean. This infested play is still pretty good against Terran. The fungal girls really nullify the use of Marines and coupled with Banelings, um, it's really good. It's a really good combination because then the Marines can't split and Banelings would just tear up the Marines because they're always grouped up. Exactly. And so I do like this decision by uh, John. But we do see two dropships loaded full of Marines that are going to be traveling around the left side of the map. But It's going to get it spotted by an overlord that's just in perfect position. I wonder if Raven Shark is going to drop here to... Kill it? No, he's gonna just gonna kill it with these marines. No, he's just gonna let the marines follow the rock. <laughs> nope. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Taka is gonna get ready for this push. Hopefully. He does have 28 zerglings building. <laughs> oh my god, that's so many zerglings. Ah, that's crazy. He needs to be um, but, um, preparing let's see for this drop. And the thing with infester zergling play, that one thing I don't like about it is that it it basically um makes you very weak to air. Now this isn't really air technically. This is more like drops, but there's no way to take out these things without mutilisks. Same thing. Oh, so he does scout the third, or the, the he normal third. down the third and maybe force a cancel, but he's not going to. Yeah, but he doesn't. Yeah. Well, Matthew Joe is plus the I, I, were out I'm of kind position. of questioning his decisions here, as Matthew Joe um, is not very ahead, as in completely behind <laughs> here. <laughs> In food, food, yeah, in and food seven investors are being built as well as two two one upgrades for our Zerg player. Mhm. Mm um, one thing that the Zerg player could be doing a lot better is uh, creep mm. spread, but like that's pretty minor for now because he does have like most map control of the. He has like fifty percent of map control, maybe even a most. bit more. Fine. Well, the Zeldaka towers are like being weird. Yeah, I don't know how like, to like, say that. Maybe, but I mean. The one thing I would say uh, <laughs> Taka could do is he's banking his money. So either that means he's mm -hmm. ready to get some freaking brood lords or ultras, or he's just bad macro. But in this case, I don't we see any hive. I'm assuming it's bad macro. And no, no spire either. Well, plus he was supply block. Well, he's still supply block, he's I guess. Really he can't build block, a lot. He can't build out of all of his hatcheries. But he doesn't seem to care, really, yeah. as he does have more infestors than, like, queen. Well, that's normal. 
He has like so many yeah. investors here. But what we do see right now is that Matthew Joe has taken the middle of the map, so that means Terran has map. Uh, I don't know some map control now. Um, we could see one of those things in like the promotion videos of like. John Dang surrounding the Terran and then He's just very good with that. And let's see if we can get some good fungal growth. A couple of fungal growth on those Marines. It was a really nice spread here by um the Terran player. Oh, a beautiful fungal on so many <laughs> things. And those siege engines are going to kill themselves faster than the Zerg can kill them. And now that Taka has saved his base and is way ahead in food as that push was just crushed. Yes, it was. But now, I don't know. It's going to be really hard for the Terran player to come back for this. I mean, we, saw some we can really, see that there's a player's making really good up. potential here from Matthew Joe, but he's just not executing it properly enough at the silver level. Yeah, plus John has so many uh, resources stocked up. It's kind of like, it's kind of like I don't he know, wanted it's going to be so hard. Or something. <laughs> like, he wants his base I mean, to die. Like, that's the only... He's going <laughs> to scan there to make sure the hatchery is still there. <laughs> or he could be scanning for the army. Hey, hey, don't hate, dude. Even though he doesn't, did I mean, so he doesn't know that the... Wait, two army. siege tanks are in this medevac, along with this one, too. He's going to drop only siege tanks, probably onto this high ground here. If he doesn't drop it on the high ground, we'll kill him. Okay, he is dropping it onto the high ground, which is a very good move if he can get control of this tower. That is, that is a very smart move. I actually need to do that. Huh. Okay, well, at least at least I'm learning something, guys. Yes, if, if, but, you, um, if yeah, there's now... anything Kevin needs to do, it's, <laughs> it's to learn about how to play Terran. Meanwhile... <laughs> <laughs> we do see the upgrades here. One, two, Good one upgrades one. against zero, zero. So even if all these zerglings came in, it would take two, maybe three siege tank shots to kill one zergling. Two, two. It's two. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, neural parasite. I, mean, I, I would love to see some neural parasite play here from the zerg. Oh my god! Meanwhile, yes. hive is also almost done here. I wonder what he's going to choose yep. as his um, weapon of choice in the late game. Although the Terran is still I would love in mid game. To see Terran's still in mid game, but the Zerg has definitely moved on to late game. This beautiful mm -hmm. Overlord spread is getting able to see oh, every it. drop coming, and hopefully we're going to see um, him re respond. He needs to respond. He needs to respond to this push. There's a lot of Zerg. Okay, he's just all right. He he didn't drop them yet. The Marines are still in the. He's dropping them. I mean, there we he's go. About to lose a queen, and he now he's to dropping lose that one queen. A bunch of Zerglings are going to come in to mop it up. I think he. Didn't send yep. the rest of his troops because he was thinking another push was going to come in from here. But Matthew Joe is not that good. And we do see Mutalisk once again can't um, take these away. And investors are too slow to fungal all this. So... But we also do see on the production tab a greater spire is being constructed. So I guess he's that's not a going for spire. That's, that is another I mean, then again, spire. he's that's also putting spire in... And he's getting an Ultralisk cavern. So he is going to be going for Ultralisk instead of Rune Swire. Normally, we would be getting a greater spire, but he's just getting a Root regular swagger? spire. Did you say root swagger? He's getting a regular spire. <laughs> Meanwhile, Whatever. we see a lot of larvae here from oh, Taka okay. not used. I think he's going to save them up. He has 4k, 2k in the bank. He's saving up for that ultralist cavern. And meanwhile, a bunch of zerglings are moving down the map for Taka. He wants to take out the third that is not built. So he's just going to run in here, and he's going to see a bunch of zerglings and marines. Is he going to engage? Yes, he is, because there's only three siege tanks. Meanwhile, yep, this army is going to get mopped up by mm. Matthew Joe as long as he has decent micro and yep he's going to be able to kill it kill that off he needs some he needs to rally his marines there are some idle marines that are in front of the barracks down there the yeah, reactor he could you can use those four yeah that will help this 30 circling. all right so what the terran needs to do right now is just ultralist. constantly do multiple times <laughs> he needs to do yeah i know 12 ultralists i know exciting right <laughs> i called ultralists he's getting a terran vehicle but, weapons um, level but, one which i don't know if that's a good idea considering he has a total of Seven. Okay, fine. He has seven seats. Where is his siege tanks? I see three. Oh. Two, two on the high ground, and oh, the rest are his base. Two in his high ground. Okay, so uh, yeah. Zerg does know so, about um, this, and he's gonna move all of his things over and uh, drop him. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna be good for those siege tanks at all. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what the Terran needs to do is multiple drops. He can't come back from this. He can't do a final attack. The Zerg Actually, just has. You, I don't think you've ever seen a macro Terran. No. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. If he's gonna push like this, yeah, he's gonna die. He's gonna die pretty quickly. Yeah. Beautiful fungals on Look everything. At that fungal Perfect. All those ultralists are going to be able to take out the rest of things. Although ultralists aren't as good as people think they are. Another fungal growth just for things. And there's the GG from Raven Shark. He's not going to leave the game. Yep, he's going to leave the game. Game. Well, that was a very one-sided match there for Taka. Taka told me he was going to lose this one, so I'm not really sure if he tried to lose with all his free larva and stuff.
No, he was trying to he was, win. He looked obviously. like he was trying to win. He wasn't trying to win. But that was really, really, pretty much all one-sided it was, games. It was one-sided. That basically demonstrates uh, Taka's very good ability and why, uh, what do you call it, he should probably play you, Kevin, at some point. Wait, is is, is Henry on right now? We need to yes, get on with the next match. match, cause, uh, next match. But we'll be talking about that in a second after this cast is over, which is right now. So we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you guys.